Welcome back to the channel, my illustrious YouTube comrades. How is everybody doing? Hope everyone is doing very well. I'm doing excellent. Thanks for asking. And um, yeah, man, I'm back, so to speak. I'm here. Let's not say I'm back. I'm, I'm here. It has been a very, very interesting couple of weeks in the EUC community. I think everybody knows why. You know, I actually missed the boat you know, coming back from vacay and uh, kind of being dark on the internet for a while. I'm still kind of dark on the internet. I, I'm barely getting on and checking things out and catching up on videos and all this good stuff that's been happening. And when I say good, I'm being I'm, 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 I'm being a Mickey. I'm, I'm being sarcastic here using my dry, wry humor here. It has been an eye opening last couple of weeks. I don't even know where to begin. I am not going to make this video all about the alley cat races. I think that topic has been beaten to death and I think what has said has already been said and I don't think there's really that much of a need to, you know, beat a dead horse. My take on what's been going on is more so community thing and how people are responding. That's kind of what's really piqued my interest more than anything else. You know, I spoke with a few of my EUC friends, Sensei Vegan, Sumaku Artists, and a few others uh, regarding this topic. And, you know, everyone kind of has a different stance, a different opinion on it. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, obviously, I'm talking amongst friends, so there's no arguing or bickering going on. Everyone is kind of just, you know, hitting their points and hitting their, you know, how they feel about it and kind of moving on. To see how a lot of people who are for the alley cat races are responding. First of all, before I even get into that, and the reason why I'm not really gonna beat this dead horse is shout out to Duff. I messaged Duff about a week ago or so when everything was going on, and I was like, I'm sure I, like he mentioned he got hit up by a lot of people in the community, but I was definitely one of the people that hit him up, like, yo, bro, where's your response video? Because before I even attempt to make a response or which I was going to do at one point, I wanted to hear how people who've been who have more skin in the game, so to speak. And Duff is definitely one of those people. Um, like I said, you know, I, I, I'm a fan of Duff's work. You know, I'm, I'm a fan of, uh, you know, the way he thinks and also just, you know, his how some would view simple videos where you know he's just riding and enjoying himself he's not out there hot dog and he's not there trying to impress anybody with his riding style or what he's doing he's out there enjoying himself and making great content while doing so and i and i highly respect that uh like i was saying with one of my euc friends bro it is not hard to get out there and do some hardcore extreme writing extreme, extreme, to extreme, extreme, extreme. impress the community and to you know give the impression that you're just super hardcore badass that is not hard at all i think what takes a lot of effort is to know that you have all this power in your midst in your control and you choose not to show off and you choose not to do anything extra to impress people. I've passed that stage a long, long time ago. Like I said, you guys know I'm in my 40s. When I was in my late 20s, even then, but my life is different from other people. So what I do and what's good for me and what works for me doesn't work for everybody else and, and it doesn't have to. But just for me in general, like I was never, a, I learned at a very early age that showing off gets you in trouble. Very early age, probably around eight or nine years old. You know, I was riding a BMX and popping willies and, and jumping over stuff and thinking I was cool. And somebody dared me to pop a willy while these girls were watching and I did it, but the front wheel came off. Extreme. And I ate it really bad in front of these girls. And it was just the most horrifying, embarrassing thing that's ever happened to me in my life. In my life. <laughs> Which is sad. It's an eight years old thing. You know, although I, I did spit milk out of my nose on this girl I was dating. But that was also in like second grade, third grade. So, yeah, I guess the eight-year-old thing is is, is uh, the most embarrassing thing that happened. 
But I learned. I learned from that. I learned from that immediately. I learned from it was one of those things that just set in your soul. Don't show off, you know, and um, it stuck with me all my life. Um, but like the conversation I was having, I was just saying, man, listen, man, there are times that I am tempted to get out there in the streets and ride with traffic and dodge cars and cut and swerve because that type of style of riding or maneuvering, should I say, is in my blood. So there have been plenty of times while driving, going on trips where I have put pedal to the metal and I've you know cut through three lanes of traffic doing 100 plus and you know things that i wouldn't even mention i've done those things and i can still do those things but you know as you get older you know your your risk to reward meter is pretty sensitive and uh you just don't do a lot of stupid things that that you used to there's the the, the things you know even now like i went on vacation I was driving. There's a few times where, you know, I, I definitely went over the speed limit. I wasn't doing as much cutting in and out of traffic as I did the first time that I drove down south, only because it was a thing in my head of like, listen, you know, you did that last time and you got away with it. I got away with murder. I was doing some, you know, and that's why I'm not getting on people about this alley cat race too tough because we've all been there to a certain extent, done some really stupid things out in public so i'm not going to get on people about why you should or shouldn't be extreme but like i was saying to my homie when we were talking that if at any time while me driving like that i crashed or injured somebody else on the road or or, or that's something that one i would have to live with for the rest of my life and i don't ever want to have something like that on my chest you know getting in an accident flipping a car you know hurting yourself you know i'm a big boy i can handle that because i know what i'm putting myself into and i always weigh what's the worst thing that can happen but that's just the way my brain works you know a lot of people's brain doesn't work like that i'm a i'm a, a very forward thinker and and i weigh all the variables while i'm doing things and before i do things uh which kept me out of a lot of trouble and kept me safe you know but um, I've done some really stupid things, uh, especially behind the wheels of a car and behind the wheels of, of, you know, riding a bicycle, you know, even riding a skateboard. I've told you I'm bombing huge hills with traffic on both sides of me going 30 plus miles an hour. You know, like I've done some really, you know, so my concern isn't really, you know, what people are doing. My real concern is just how are you not worried about the people around you? And have we come become so numb as a people that other people's safety isn't important? And I've touched on this in a, in a prior video, so there's really no need to me to hammer this home. But it is shocking to see how many people, when they are defending what they're watching, when they're defending participating in races or participating in, in, in activities, as such that nobody thinks of the people around them. Here's something that kind of like took me for a loop when I was watching Sean's video when he's riding through and his camera whacked somebody's, you know, side view mirror. And he was just like, oops, let's get out of here before they can catch up to us. It wasn't even a let me stop and check or make sure I didn't, you know, damage somebody's vehicle or damage somebody's rental car or whatever the case may be it's just like he didn't give two shits about what he did and he just got out of there that shocked me that really blew my mind one for being such a big youtube content creator in our community wow like you know like really because here's the thing and i, and I posed this question to my homie when we were talking i'm like what if the guy that he smacked side view mirror decided to chase him down and in the process of chasing him down sean ended up crashing you know what would have happened there would have been a youtube video titled i almost got ran over by some crazed driver in new york city it would never have been look what i did to cause this to happen to me but look what this guy did to me and it's the same with many videos that i have seen in the past 
especially coming from city not to harp on you guys not to get on you guys but it's just just saying it was always look at what happened to me look what happened to us look what this guy did even that video when the van you know this is a few months back with the van uh hitting the guy on a skateboard you know how the video was pictured and framed was this guy just came out of nowhere and was just angry and decided to hit a skateboarder but when you inspect and check out the video that show that came up prior to that shows that these euc guys were hogging up damn near three lanes of traffic doing what they do best and agitating this guy in the van before this went down but if you don't really break videos down that well you wouldn't have picked that up you would just saw these guys riding and just saying to yourself well they're uc riders they have the right of way and they should be in the road and i don't think anybody really has the right of way but if we're just talking logic here a four thousand pound metal container that's rolling down the street in my opinion has the right of way before anything else now to say pedestrians have the right of way as well and i do agree with that but again as a pedestrian if i'm about to walk across the street and the light is green for me to walk across the street but i see a car barreling down the street i'm gonna wait to see if that car slows down before i cross but that's just me so you know it's really really unfortunate to see the mentality of a lot of people where i read so many comments uh comments from from just the, the the race itself the entire message thing that was going on in the euc community dust response video the comments he were getting and there's a slew of comments there's 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 a ton of people that are completely just turned off and upset and not get that like I was saying to the uninitiated, there's a lot of things, you know, when you're watching those races that's already going to trigger you before the running through red lights and all that. There's a lot of things that's going to trigger a lot of people to the initiated, to someone who's driven in New York City. I get some of what the New York City crowd saying about, oh, well, if you don't ride this fast in New York City, you're going to get ran over. Really? What about all the bicyclists in New York City? All the city bike riders and all that stuff. The people who just casually ride into work every day couldn't even go above 15 miles an hour. They seem to navigate New York City very well. They're not getting ran over. You don't see news clippings every day about another bicyclist mowed down by the city traffic. So I would understand this whole oh you guys don't understand how the city moves bro i understand how the city moves we were we used to do 70 down a one-way block all the time when we used to go and buy bud and all that like believe me i understand how the city moves people drive like crazy people in new york city but that's just new york city not everyone does that and there is no proof and no evidence of the fact that if you do decide to drive at a normal rate, at a normal pace, that that would happen to you. That would be insanity. So I don't buy that, oh, you have to ride like this nonsense. And and the, and the funny thing is I came across this video of a guy. This is a bicyclist. This is not an EC rider. This is a bicyclist who documents all the pedestrians that walk in traffic. Actually, I'll throw a clip up because this is really interesting to see because it's showing me a pattern that I've never seen before. And that pattern is we don't give a shit about pedestrians. We will blame pedestrians for walking in the bike lane and all this nonsense, but you know what we won't do? Slow down. Even though we know that pedestrians come out of nowhere, walk into the bike lane, don't really care about some, not all, but some, we're not going to slow down. That is what I find more disturbing than anything else. And I, 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 you know, I'm, you know, the moral of the story is, you know, for the first couple of months of riding my EUC, I, I, all I wanted to do was go on group rides. All I wanted to do was ride with other EUC riders. And now, 
I'm so happy and I'm so lucky that I didn't start off doing that where I don't get this pack mentality going on in my head and I feel that I can do whatever I want or even get make my mind to think that because I'm riding an EUC and I'm in the road, I should have rights and authority and the right of way more than anybody else on the road. And it's my road and you guys should look out for me and not the other way around. But just like people said to me about me wearing no helmet, natural selection will take its course and eventually you're going to learn the hard way. I had to take many people coming at me about me not wearing a helmet, even though I ride extremely safe. I'm fairly skilled on an EUC for being so new to the sport. But here I am dragging this conversation out, which I wasn't trying to do. I just wanted to say in this video that I'm 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 actually fortunate and I'm lucky and I'm happy that I ride by myself and I learned to ride by myself and I'm not a pack rider and um if I ever were to ride in a pack I know that I wouldn't be influenced by the pack. I don't care if those guys are doing 35 down a tunnel with no cars around. I'm going to do what the what I'm going to do what I want to do. And I won't be affected. And I think that's also a problem with what's going on is there's a lot of pack mentality going on. And hey, man, to each their own, right? You know, for the ones that care, continue to do so. The ones that don't care, hey, man, it's your thing. Do what you want to do. But this is all a mathematical equation that's playing out. And eventually it's going to come to a head. And we're going to see a lot of people changing their tunes when it does. I've already predicted this. I predicted this was going to happen. What's going on right now? Three months ago, you know, and um, I, it's in my video, you know, and uh, it's this is a, I deal in mathematics. I don't deal in any, I don't deal in what ifs or, or, or what could have been or what's going to happen. I deal in, in in the equation and the equation never fails. It's always on point, you know. So um, with that, I bid you adieu. You guys stay safe out there. Be kind to one another for the people who have the ability to do so. For the rest, just do you. And um, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.